Jerry Go Isle That Car, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org. Come, all ye railroad section men, and listen to my song. It is of Larry O'Sullivan, who now is dead and gone. For twenty years a section boss, he never hired a tar. Oh, it's giant ahead and center back, and Jerry Go Isle That Car. For twenty years, a section boss, he never hired a tar. But it's giant ahead and center back, and Jerry go aisle that car. For twenty years, a section boss, he worked upon the track. And be it to his credit, he never had a rack. For he kept every giant right up to the pint with the tap of the tamp and bar. And while the boys was a swimming up the ties, it's Jerry, would you aisle that car? God rest ye, Larry O'Sullivan. To me you were kind and good. He always made the section men go out and chop me wood, and fetch me water from the well, and chop me kindling fine, and any man that wouldn't lend a hand, twas Larry give him his time. And every Sunday morning unto the gang he'd say, Me buys prepare yous be aware the old lady goes to church the day. Now I want every man to pump the best he can, for the distance it is far, and we have to get in ahead of number ten, so Jerry go and aisle that car. Twas in November, in the winter time, and the ground all covered with snow. Come put the hand car on the track, and over the section go. With his big soldier coat buttoned up to his throat, and all weathers he would dare, and it's Paddy Mac will use walk the track, and Jerry go and aisle that car. Give my respects to the roadmaster, poor Larry, he did cry, and leave me up that I may see the old hand car before I die. Come giant ahead and center back, and Jerry go and aisle that car. Then lay the spike maul upon his chest, the gauge and the old claw bar, and while the boys do the fillin' up the grave, oh Jerry, go and aisle that car. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. John Garner's Trail Herd Collected by John Lomax Read for LibriVox.org by Michael Fascio Come all you old-timers and listen to my song. I'll make it short as possible and I'll not keep you long. I'll relate to you about the time you all remember well. When we, with old Joe Garner, drove a beef herd up the trail. When we left the ranch it was early in the spring. We had as good a corporal as ever roped its swing. Good hands and good horses, good outfit through and through. We went well equipped. We were a jolly crew. We had no little herd, two thousand head or more, and some as wild a brush beeves as you ever saw before. We swung to them all the way and sometimes by the tail. Oh, you know we had a circus, as we all went up the trail. All things went on well till we reached the open ground, and then them cattle turned in, and they gave us merry hell. They stampeded every night that came and did it without fail. Oh, you know we had a circus, as we all went up the trail. We would round them up at morning, and the boss would make a count, and say, Look here, old punchers, we are out quite an amount. You must make all losses good and do it without fail, or you will never get another job of driving up the trail. When we reached Red River, we gave the inspector the dodge. He swore by God Almighty, in jail old John should lodge. We told him if he'd taken our boss and had him locked in jail, we would sure get his scalp as we all came down the trail. When we reached the reservation, how squirmish we did feel. Although we had tried old Garner and knew him true as steel. And if we would follow him and do as he said do, That old bald-headed cow thief would surely take us through. When we reached Dodge City, we drew our four months' pay. Times was better then, boys, that was a better day. The way we drank and gambled and threw the girls around. Say, a crowd of Texas cowboys has come to take our town. The cowboy sees many hardships, although he takes them well. The fun we had upon that trip, no human tongue can tell. The cowboy's life is a dreary life, though his mind, it is no load. 
and he always spends his money, like he found it, in the road. If you ever meet old Garner, you must meet him on the square, for he is the biggest cow thief that ever tramped out there. But if you want to hear him roar and spin a lively tale, just ask him about the time we all went up the trail. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Old Scout's Lament, collected by John Lomax, and read for LibriVox.org by Kurt from Tucson, Arizona. Come all of you, my brother scouts, and join me in my song. Come let us sing together, though the shadows fall so long. Of all the old frontiersmen that used to scour the plain, there are but few of them that with us yet remain. Day after day they're dropping off, they're going one by one. Our clan is fast decreasing, our race is almost run. There were many of our number that never wore the blue, but faithfully they did their part as brave men tried and true. They never joined the army, but had other work to do in piloting the coming folks to help them safely through. But brothers, we are falling, our race is almost run. The days of elk and buffalo and beaver traps are gone. Oh, the days of elk and buffalo, it fills my heart with pain. To know these days are past and gone, to never come again. We fought the redskin rascals over valley, hill, and plain. We fought him in the mountain top and fought him down again. These fighting days are over, the Indian yell resounds. No more along the border, peace sends far sweeter sounds. But we found great joy, old comrades, to hear and make it die. We won bright homes for gentle ones, and now our west, goodbye. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Lone Buffalo Hunter, collected by John Lomax and read for LibriVox.org by Kurt from Tucson, Arizona. It's one of those Texas cowboys, a story I'll tell. No name I will mention, though in Texas they do dwell. Go find them where you will, they are all so very brave. And when in good society, they seldom misbehave. When the fall work is all over, in the line camp they'll be found. For they have to ride those lonesome lines the long winter round. They prove loyal to a comrade, no matter what's to do. And when in love with a fair one, they seldom prove untrue. But springtime comes at last and finds them glad and gay. They ride out to the roundup about the first of May. About the first of August they start up the trail. They have to stay with the cattle no matter rain or hail. But when they get to the shipping point, then they receive their tens. Straightway to the bar room and gently blow them in. It's the height of their ambition, so I've been truly told, to ride good horses and saddles and spend the silver and gold. These last two things I've mentioned, it is their heart's desire, and when they leave the shipping point, their eyes are like balls of fire. It's of those fighting cattle they seem to have no fear, a riding bucking broncos oft is their heart's desire. They will ride into the branding pen, a rope within their hands. They will catch them by each forefoot and bring them to the sands. It's all together in practice with a little bit of slight. A roping Texas cattle, it is their heart's delight. But now comes the rising generation to take the cowboy's place. Likewise the corn-fed granger with his bold and cheeky face. It's on those plains of Texas a lone buffalo hunter does stand to tell the fate of the cowboy that rode at his right hand. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
the crooked trail to holbrook collected by john lomax and read for LibriVox.org by kurt from tucson arizona come all you jolly cowboys that follow the bronco steer i'll sing to you a verse or two your spirits for to cheer it's all about a trip a trip that i did undergo on that crooked trail to holbrook in arizona o oh. it's on the seventeenth of february our herd it started out it would have made your hearts shudder to hear them bawl and shout as wild as any buffalo that ever rode the platte those dogies we were driving and every one was fat we crossed the mescal mountains on the way to gilson flats and when we got to gilson flats lord how the wind did blow it blew so hard it blew so fierce we knew not where to go but our spirits never failed us as onward we did go on that crooked trail to holbrook in arizona o oh. that night we had a stampede christ how the cattle run we made it to our horses i tell you we had no fun over the prickly pear and catclaw brush we quickly made our way we thought of our long journey and the girls we left one day it's long by some serva we slowly punched along while each and every puncher would sing a hearty song to cheer up his comrade as onward we did go on that crooked trail to holbrook in arizona o oh. we crossed the mogian mountains where the tall pines do grow grass grows in abundance and rippling streams do flow our packs were always turning of course our gait was slow on that crooked trail to holbrook in arizona o oh. at last we got to holbrook a little gale did blow it blew up sand and pebble stones and it didn't blow them slow we had to drink the water from that muddy little stream and swallowed a peck of dirt when we tried to eat a bean but the cattle now are shipped and homeward we are bound with a lot of as tired horses as ever could be found across the reservation no danger did we fear but thought of wives and sweethearts and the ones we love so dear now we are back in globe city our friendship there to share here's luck to every puncher that follows the bronco steer end of poem this recording is in the public domain Only a Cowboy, collected by John Lomax, and read for LibriVox.org by Kurt, from Tucson, Arizona. Away out in old Texas, that great Lone Star State, where the mockingbird whistles both early and late. It was in western Texas, on the old N.A. range, the boy fell a victim on the old state plains. He was only a cowboy gone on before. He was only a cowboy we will never see more. He was doing his duty on the old N.A. range, but now he is sleeping on the old state plains. His crew, they were numbered twenty-seven or eight. The boys were like brothers, their friendship was great. When, oh God, have mercy, was heard from behind, the cattle were left to drift on the line. He leaves a dear wife and little ones, too, to earn them a living as fathers oft do. For while he was working for the loved ones so dear, he was took without warning or one word of cheer. And while he is sleeping where the sun always shines, the boys they go dashing along on the line. The look on their faces, it speaks to us all, of one who departed to the home of the soul. He was only a cowboy, gone on before. He was only a cowboy, we will never see more. He was doing his duty on the old N.A. range, but now he is sleeping on the old staked plains. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Fuller and Warren, collected by John Lomax and read for LibriVox.org by Kurt from Tucson, Arizona. Ye sons of Columbia, your attention I do crave, while a sorrowful story I do tell, which happened of late in the Indiana state, and a hero not many could excel, 
like samson he courted made choice of the fair and intended to make her his wife but she like delilah his heart did ensnare which cost him his honour and his life a gold ring he gave her in token of his love on the face was the image of the dove they mutually agreed to get married with speed and were promised by the powers above but the fickle-minded maiden vowed again to wed to young warren who lived in that place it was a fatal blow that caused his overthrow and added her shame and disgrace when fuller came to hear he was deprived of his dear whom he vowed by the powers to wed with his heart full of woe unto warren he did go and smilingly unto him he said young man you have injured me to gratify your cause by reporting that i left a prudent wife acknowledge now that you have wronged me for although i break the laws young warren i'll deprive you of your life then warren he replied your request must be denied for your darling to my heart she is bound and further i can say that this is our wedding day in spite of all the heroes in town then fuller in the passion of his love and anger bound alas it caused many to cry at one fatal shot killed warren on the spot and smilingly said i'm ready now to die the time was drawing nigh when fuller had to die he bid the audience adieu like an angel he did stand for he was a handsome man on his breast he had a ribbon of blue ten thousand spectators did smite him on the breast and the guards dropped a tear from the eye saying cursed be she who caused this misery would to god in his stead she had to die the gentle god of love looked with anger from above and the rope flew asunder like the sand to doctors for the pay they murdered him they say they hung him by main strength of hand but the corpse it was buried and the doctors lost their prey oh that harlot was bribed i do believe bad women to a certainty are the downfall of men as adam was beguiled by eve End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Trail to Mexico, collected by John Lomax and read for LibriVox.org by Kurt from Tucson, Arizona. I made up my mind to change my way and quit my crowd that was so gay to leave my native home for a while and to travel west for many a mile woo a woo a woo a woo twas all in the merry month of may when i started for texas far away i left my darling girl behind she said her heart was only mine woo a woo a woo a woo oh it was when i embraced her in my arms i thought she had ten thousand charms her caresses were soft her kisses were sweet saying we will get married next time we meet woo a woo a woo a woo it was in the year of eighty three that a j stinson hired me he says young fellow i want you to go and drive this herd to mexico woo a woo a woo a woo the first horse they gave me was an old black with two big set fasts on his back i patted him with gunny sacks and my bedding all he went up then down and i got a fall woo -a -woo -a -woo -a -woo. the next they gave me was an old gray i'll remember him till my dying day and if i had to swear to the fact i believe he was worse off than the black woo -a woo -a woo -a woo oh it was early in the year when i went on trail to drive the steer i stood my guard through sleet and snow while on the trail to mexico woo -a woo -a woo -a woo oh it was a long and lonesome go as our herd rolled on to mexico with laughter light and the cowboy song to mexico we rolled along woo a woo a woo a woo 
when i arrived in mexico i wanted to see my love but could not go so i wrote a letter a letter to my dear but not a word from her could i hear woo ah woo ah woo ah woo when i arrived at the once loved home i called for the darling of my own she said she had married a richer life therefore while well, cowboy seek another wife woo ah woo ah woo ah woo oh the girl she is married i do adore and i cannot stay at home any more i'll cut my way to a foreign land or i'll go back west to my cowboy band woo ah woo ah woo ah woo i'll go back to the western land i'll hunt up my old cowboy band where the girls are few and the boys are true and a false-hearted love i never knew woo ah woo ah woo ah woo oh buddy oh buddy please stay at home don't be forever on the roam there is many a girl more true than i so pray don't go where the bullets fly woo ah woo ah woo ah woo it's curse your gold and your silver too god pity a girl that won't prove true i'll travel west where the bullets fly i'll stay on the trail till the day i die woo ah woo ah woo ah woo end of poem this recording is in the public domain the horse wrangler collected by john lomax read for librivox dot org by nemo i thought one spring just for fun i'd see how cow punching was done and when the roundups had begun i tackled the cattle king says he my foreman is in town he's at the plaza and his name is brown if you'll see him he'll take you down says i that's just the thing we started for the ranch next day brown augured me most all the way he said that cow punching was nothing but play that it was no work at all that all you had to do was ride and only drifting with the tide the son of a gun oh how he lied don't you think he had his gall he put me in charge of a caviar and told me not to work too hard that all i had to do was guard the horses from getting away i had one hundred and sixty head i sometimes wish that i was dead when one got away brown's head turned red and there was the devil to pay sometimes one would make a break across the prairie he would take as if running for his stake it seemed to them but play sometimes i could not head them at all sometimes my horse would catch a fall and i'd shoot on like a cannonball till the earth came in my way they saddled me up on an old gray hack with two set fast on his back they patted him down with a gunny sack and used my bedding all when i got on he quit the ground went up in the air and turned around and i came down and busted the ground I got one hell of a fall. They took me up and carried me in and rubbed me down with an old stake pin. That's the way they all begin. You're doing well, says Brown. And in the morning, if you don't die, I'll give you another horse to try. Oh, say, can't I walk, says I? Says he, yes, back to town. I've traveled up and I've traveled down. I've traveled this country round and round. I've lived in city and I've lived in town. But I've got this much to say. Before you try cow punch and kiss your wife, take a heavy insurance on your life, then cut your throat with a barlow knife, for it's easier done that way. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. California Joe, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Peter Yearsley. Well, mates, I don't like stories. Or am I going to act a part around the campfire that ain't a truthful fact? So fill your pipes and listen. I'll tell you. Let me see. I think it was in fifty, from that till sixty-three. You've all heard tell of Bridger. I used to run with Jim, and many a hard day's scouting I've done alongside of him. Well, once, near old Fort Reno, a trapper used to dwell. We called him old Pat Reynolds. The scouts all knew him well. One night, in the spring of fifty, we camped on Powder River, 
and killed a calf of buffalo and cooked a slice of liver while eating quite contented i heard three shots or four put out the fire and listened we heard a dozen more we knew that old man reynolds had moved his traps up here so picking up our rifles and fixing on our gear we moved as quick as lightning to save was our desire too late the painted heathens had set the house on fire we hitched our horses quickly and waded up the stream while down close beside the waters i heard a muffled scream and there among the bushes a little girl did lie i picked her up and whispered i'll save you or i'll die lord what a ride old bridger had covered my retreat sometimes that child would whisper in voice low and sweet poor papa god will take him to mamma up above there is no one left to love me there is no one left to love the little one was thirteen and i was twenty-two i says i'll be your father and love you just as true she nestled to my bosom her hazel eyes so bright looked up and made me happy the close pursuit that night one month had passed and maggie we called her hazel eye in truth was going to leave me was going to say good-bye her uncle mad jack reynolds reported long since dead had come to claim my angel his brother's child he said what could i say we parted mad jack was growing old i handed him a banknote and all i had in gold they rode away at sunrise i went a mile or two and parting says we'll meet again may god watch over you by a laughing dancing brook a little cabin stood and weary with a long day's scout i spied it in the wood the pretty valley stretched beyond the mountains towered above and near its willow banks i heard the cooing of a dove twas one grand pleasure the brook was plainly seen like a long thread of silver in a cloth of lovely green the laughter of the water the cooing of the dove was like some painted picture some well-told tale of love while drinking in the country and resting in the saddle i heard a gentle rippling like the dipping of a paddle and turning to the water a strange sight met my view a lady with her rifle in a little bark canoe she stood up in the centre with her rifle to her eye i thought just for a second my time had come to die i doffed my hat and told her if it was just the same to drop her little shooter for i was not her game she dropped the deadly weapon and leapt from the canoe says she i beg your pardon i thought you was a sioux your long hair and your buckskin looked warrior-like and rough my bead was spoiled by sunshine or i'd have killed you sure enough perhaps it would have been better if you'd dropped me then says i for surely such an angel would bear me to the sky she blushingly dropped her eyelids her cheeks were crimson red one half shy glance she gave me and then hung down her head i took her little hand in mine she wondered what it meant and yet she drew it not away but rather seemed content we sat upon the mossy bank her eyes began to fill the brook was rippling at our feet the dove was cooing still tis strong arms were thrown around her i'll save you or i'll die i clasped her to my bosom my long lost hazel eye the rapture of that moment was almost heaven to me i kissed her mid the tear-drops her merriment and glee her heart near mine was beating when sobbingly she said my dear my brave preserver they told me you were dead but oh those parting words joe have never left my mind you said we'll meet again mag then rode off like the wind and oh how i have prayed joe for you who saved my life that god would send an angel to guide you through all strife the one who claimed me from you my uncle good and true is sick in yonder cabin has talked so much of you if joe were living darling he said to me last night he would care for you maggie when god puts out my light we found the old man sleeping hush maggie let him rest the sun was slowly setting in the far-off glowing west 
and though we talked in whispers he opened wide his eyes a dream a dream he murmured alas a dream of lies she drifted like a shadow to where the old man lay you had a dream dear uncle another dream to-day oh yes i saw an angel as pure as mountain snow and near her at my bedside stood california joe i'm sure i'm not an angel dear uncle that you know these hands that hold your hand too my face is not like snow now listen while i tell you for i have news to cheer hazel eye is happy for joe is truly here it was but a few days after the old man said to me joe boy she is an angel and good as angels be for three long months she hunted and trapped and nursed me too god bless you boy i believe it she's safe along with you the sun was slowly sinking when maggie my wife and i went riding through the valley the teardrops in her eye one year ago to-day joe i saw the mossy grave we laid him neath the daisies my uncle good and brave and comrade every springtime is sure to find me there there is something in the valley that is always fresh and fair our love is always kindled while sitting by the stream where two hearts were united in love's sweet happy dream end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Boston Burglar, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. I was born in Boston City, a city you all know well. Brought up by honest parents, the truth to you all tell. Brought up by honest parents, and raised most tenderly, till I became a roving man at the age of twenty-three. My character was taken then, and I was sent to jail. My friends, they found it was in vain to get me out on bail. The jury found me guilty. The clerk, he wrote it down. The judge, he passed me sentence, and I was sent to Charleston Town. You ought to have seen my aged father a-pleading at the bar. Also my dear old mother, a tearing of her hair. Tearing of her old gray locks as the tears came rolling down. Saying, Son, dear son, what have you done that you are sent to charleston town they put me aboard an eastbound train one cold december day in every station that we passed i'd hear the people say there goes a noted burglar in strong chains he'll be bound for the doing of some crime or other he is sent to charleston town there is a girl in boston she is a girl that i love well and if i ever gain my liberty along with her i'll dwell and when i regain my liberty bad company i will shun night walking gambling and also drinking rum now you who have your liberty pray keep it if you can and don't go round the streets at night to break the laws of man for if you do you'll surely rue and find yourself like me a serving out my twenty-one years in the penitentiary and a poem this recording is in the public domain Sam Bass, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Sam Bass was born in Indiana, it was his native home, and at the age of seventeen young Sam began to roam. Sam first came out to Texas, a cowboy for to be, kinder-hearted fellow you seldom ever see. Sam used to deal in race stock, one called the Denton Mare. He matched her in scrub races and took her to the fair. Sam used to coin the money and spent it just as free. He always drank good whiskey wherever he might be. Sam left the Collins Ranch in the merry month of May with a herd of Texas cattle, the Black Hills for to see. Sold out in Custer City and then got on a spree, a harder set of cowboys you seldom ever see. On their way back to Texas they robbed the U.P. train, 
and then split up in couples and started out again. Joe Collins and his partner were overtaken soon. With all their hard-earned money, they had to meet their doom. Sam made it back to Texas, all right, side up with care. Rode into the town of Denton with all his friends to share. Sam's life was short in Texas. Three robberies did he do. He robbed all the passenger, mail, and express cars, too. Sam had four companions, four bold and daring lads. They were Richardson, Jackson, Joe Collins, and Old Dad. Four more bold and daring cowboys the Rangers never knew. They whipped the Texas Rangers and ran the boys in blue. Sam had another companion, called Arkansas for short, was shot by a Texas Ranger by the name of Thomas Floyd. Oh, Tom is a big six-footer and thinks he's mighty fly, but I can tell you his racket. He's a deadbeat on the sly. Jim Murphy was arrested and then released on bail. He jumped his bond at Tyler and then took the train for Terrell. But Mayor Jones had posted Jim, and that was all a stall. T'was only a plan to capture Sam before the coming fall. Sam met his fate at Round Rock, July the 21st. They pierced poor Sam with rifle balls and emptied out his purse. Poor Sam, he is a corpse and six foot under clay, and Jackson's in the bushes, trying to get away. Jim had borrowed Sam's good gold and didn't want to pay. The only shot he saw was to give poor Sam away. He sold out Sam and Barnes and left their friends to mourn. Oh, what a scorching Jim will get when Gabriel blows his horn. And so he sold out Sam and Barnes and left their friends to mourn. Oh, what a scorching Jim will get when Gabriel blows his horn. Perhaps he's got to heaven. There's none of us can say. But if I'm right in my surmise, he's gone the other way. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Zebra Dun, collected by John Lomax and read for LibriVox.org by Kurt, from Tucson, Arizona. We were camped on the plains at the head of the Cimarron, when along came a stranger and stopped to argue some. He looked so very foolish that we began to look around. We thought he was a greenhorn that had just escaped from town. We asked if he had been to breakfast. He hadn't had a smear, so we opened up the chuck box and bade him have his share. He took a cup of coffee and some biscuits and some beans, and he began to talk and tell about foreign kings and queens. About the Spanish War and fighting on the seas, with guns as big as steers and ramrods big as trees, and about old Paul Jones, a mean fighting son of a gun, who was the grittiest cuss that ever pulled a gun. Such an educated feller, his thoughts just came in herds. He astonished all them cowboys with them jaw-breaking words. He just kept on talking till he made the boys all sick, and they began to look around just how to play a trick. He said he had lost his job upon the Santa Fe, and was going across the plains to strike the seven D. He didn't say how come it, some trouble with the boss but said he'd like to borrow a nice fat saddle hoss. This tickled all the boys to death. They laughed way down in their sleeves. We will lend you a horse just as fresh and fat as you please. Shorty grabbed a lariat and roped the zebra dun and turned him over to the stranger and waited for the fun. Old Dunny was a rocky outlaw that had grown so awful wild that he could paw the white out of the moon every jump for a mile. Old Dunny stood right still as if he didn't know until he was saddled and ready for to go. When the stranger hit the saddle, old Dunny quit the earth and traveled right straight up for all that he was worth. A pitching and a squealing, a having wall-eyed fits his hind feet perpendicular his front ones in the bits we could see the tops of mountains under dunny every jump but the stranger he was growed there just like the camel's hump the stranger sat upon him and curled his black moustache just like a summer boarder waiting for his hash 
he thumped him in the shoulders and spurred him when he whirled to show them flunky punchers that he was the wolf of the world when the stranger had dismounted once more upon the ground we knew he was a thoroughbred and not a gent from town the boss who was standing round watching of the show walked right up to the stranger and told him he needn't go if you can use the lasso like you rode old zebra dun you are the man i've been looking for ever since the year one oh he could twirl the lariat and he didn't do it slow he could catch them four feet nine out of ten for any kind of dough and when the herd stampeded he was always on the spot and set them to nothing like the boiling of a pot there's one thing and a sure thing i've learned since i've been born that every educated feller ain't a plum green horn end of poem this recording is in the public domain the buffalo skinners collected by john lomax and read for LibriVox.org by kurt from tucson arizona come all you jolly fellows and listen to my song there are not many verses it will not detain you long it's concerning some young fellows who did agree to go and spend one summer pleasantly on the range of the buffalo it happened in jacksboro on the spring of seventy three a man by the name of Krigo came stepping up to me saying how do you do young fella and how would you like to go and spend one summer pleasantly on the range of the buffalo it's me being out of employment this to Krigo i did say this going out on the buffalo range depends upon the pay but if you will pay good wages and transportation too i think sir i will go with you to the range of the buffalo yes i will pay good wages give transportation too provided you will go with me and stay the summer through but if you should grow homesick come back to jacksboro i won't pay transportation from the range of the buffalo it's now our outfit was complete seven able-bodied men with navy six and needle gun our troubles did begin our way it was a pleasant one the route we had to go until we crossed pease river on the range of the buffalo it's now we've crossed pease river our troubles have begun the first damn tail i went to rip christ how i cut my thumb while skinning the damned old stinkers our lives wasn't a show for the indians watched to pick us off while skinning the buffalo he fed us on such sorry chuck i wished myself most dead it was old jerk beef croton coffee and sour bread pease rivers as salty as hell fire the water i could never go oh god i wished i had never come to the range of the buffalo our meat it was buffalo hump and iron wedge bread and all we had to sleep on was a buffalo robe for a bed the fleas and graybacks worked on us oh boys it was not slow i'll tell you there's no worse hell on earth than the range of the buffalo our hearts were cased with buffalo hawks our souls were cased with steel and the hardships of that summer would nearly make us reel while skinning the damned old stinkers our lives they had no show for the indians waited to pick us off on the hills of mexico the season being near over old Krigo he did say the crowd had been extravagant was in debt to him that day we coaxed him and we begged him and still it was no go we left old Krigo's bones to bleach on the range of the buffalo oh it's now we've crossed pease river and homeward we are bound no more in that hell-fired country shall ever we be found go home to our wives and sweethearts tell others not to go for god's forsaken the buffalo range and the damned old buffalo end of poem this recording is in the public domain McAfee's Confession, collected by John Lomax and read for LibriVox.org by Kurt from Tucson, Arizona. 
now come young men and list to me a sad and mournful history and may you ne'er forgetful be of what i tell this day to thee oh i was thoughtless young and gay and often broke the sabbath day in wickedness i took delight and sometimes done what wasn't right i'd scarcely passed my fifteenth year my mother and my father dear were silent in their deep dark grave their spirits gone to him who gave twas on a pleasant summer day when from my home i ran away and took unto myself a wife which step was fatal to my life oh she was kind and good to me as ever woman ought to be and might this day have been alive no doubt had i not met miss hattie stout ah well i mind the fatal day when hattie stole my heart away twas love for her controlled my will and did cause me my wife to kill twas on a brilliant summer's night when all was still the stars shone bright my wife lay still upon the bed and i approached to her and said dear wife here's medicine i have brought for you this day my love i've bought i know it will be good for you for those vile fits pray take it do she cast on me a loving look and in her mouth the poison took down by her infant on the bed and her last long sleep she laid her head oh who could tell a mother's thought when first to her the news was brought the sheriff said her son was sought and into prison must be brought only a mother standing by to hear them tell the reason why her son in prison he must lie till on the scaffold he must die my father sixty years of age the best of counsel did engage to see if something could be done to save his disobedient son so farewell mother do not weep though soon with demons i will sleep my soul now feels its mental hell and soon with demons i will dwell the sheriff cut the slender cord his soul went up to meet its lord the doctor said the wretch is dead his spirit from his body's fled his weeping mother cried aloud o oh god do save this gazing crowd that none may ever have to pay for gambling on the sabbath day end of poem this recording is in the public domain little joe the wrangler collected by john lomax and read for LibriVox.org by kurt from tucson arizona it's little joe the wrangler he'll wrangle nevermore his days with the remuda they are o'er twas a year ago last april when he rode into our camp just a little texas stray and all alone on a little texas pony he called chaw with his brogan shoes and overalls a tougher kid you never in your life before had saw his saddle was a texas cack built many years ago with an okay spur on one foot lightly swung his hat roll and a cotton sack so loosely tied behind and his canteen from his saddle horn was swung he said that he had to leave his home his pa had married twice and his new ma whipped him every day or two so he saddled up old chaw one night and lit a shuck this way and he's now trying to paddle his own canoe he said if we would give him work he'd do the best he could though he didn't know straight up about a cow so the boss he cut him out a mount and kindly put him on for he sort of liked this little kid somehow learned him to wrangle horses and to try to know them all and get them in at daylight if he could to follow the chuck wagon and always hitch the team and to help the cochinetto rustle wood we had driven to the pecos the weather being fine we had camped on the south side in a bend 
when a norther commenced blowin we had doubled up our guard for had taken all of us to hold them in little joe the wrangler was called out with the rest though the kid had scarcely reached the herd when the cattle they stampeded like a hailstorm long they fled when we were all a ridin for the lead midst the streaks of lightning and a horse we could see in the lead twas little joe the wrangler in the lead he was riding old blue rocket with a slicker o'er his head a trying to check the cattle in their speed at last we got them milling and kinda quieted down and the extra guard back to the wagon went but there was one a missin and we knew it at a glance twas our little texas stray poor wranglin joe the next morning just at daybreak we found where rocket fell down in a washout twenty feet below and beneath the horse mashed to a pulp his spur had rung the knell was our little texas stray poor wrangling joe end of poem this recording is in the public domain harry bale collected by john lomax and read for LibriVox.org by kurt from tucson arizona come all kind friends and kindred dear and christians young and old a story i'll relate to you twill make your blood run cold tis all about an unfortunate boy who lived not far from here in the township of arcade in the county of la Pierre it seems his occupation was a sawyer in a mill he followed it successfully two years one month until until this fatal accident that caused many to weep and wail twas where this young man lost his life his name was harry bale on the twenty ninth of april in the year of seventy nine he went to work as usual no fear did he design in lowering of the feed bar throwing the carriage into gear it brought him down upon the saw and cut him quite severe it cut him through the collarbone and halfway down the back it threw him down upon the saw the carriage coming back he started for the shanty his strength was failing fast he said oh boys i'm wounded i fear it is my last his brothers they were sent for likewise his sisters too the doctors came and dressed his wound but kind words proved untrue poor harry had no father to weep beside his bed no kind and loving mother to soothe his aching head he was just as gallant a young man as you ever wish to know but he withered like a flower it was his time to go they placed him in his coffin and laid him in his grave his brothers and sisters mourned the loss of a brother so true and brave they took him to the graveyard and laid him away to rest his body lies mouldering his soul is among the blest end of poem this recording is in the public domain foreman monroe collected by john lomax and read for LibriVox.org by kurt from tucson arizona come all you brave young shanty boys and list while i relate concerning a young shanty boy and his untimely fate concerning a young riverman so manly true and brave twas on a jam at jerry's rock he met his watery grave twas on a sunday morning as you will quickly hear our logs were piled up mountain high we could not keep them clear our foreman said come on brave boys with hearts devoid of fear we'll break the jam on jerry's rock and for agonstown we'll steer now some of them were willing while others they were not all for to work on sunday they did not think they ought but six of our brave shanty boys had volunteered to go and break the jam on jerry's rock with their foreman young monroe 
they had not rolled off many logs till they heard his clear voice say i'd have you boys be on your guard for the jam will soon give way these words he'd scarcely spoken when the jam did break and go taking with it six of those brave boys and their foreman young monroe now when those other shanty boys this sad news came to hear in search of their dead comrades to the river they did steer six of their mangled bodies of floating down did go while crushed and bleeding near the banks lay the foreman young monroe they took him from his watery grave brushed back his raven hair there was a fair form among them whose cries did rend the air there was a fair form among them a girl from saginaw town whose cries rose to the skies for her lover who'd gone down fair clara was a noble girl the river man's true friend she and her widowed mother lived at the river's bend and the wages of her own true love the boss to her did pay but the shanty boys for her made up a generous sum next day they buried him quite decently twas on the first of may come all you brave young shanty boys and for your comrade pray engraved upon the hemlock tree that by the grave does grow is the aged date and the sad fate of the foreman young monroe fair clara did not long survive her heart broke with her grief and less than three months afterwards death came to her relief and when the time had come she was called to go her last request was granted to be laid by young monroe come all you brave young shanty boys i'd have you call and see to green graves by the riverside where grows a hemlock tree the shanty boys cut off the wood where lay those lovers low tis the handsome clara vernon and her true love jack monroe End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Dreary Black Hills, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org. Kind friends, you must pity my horrible tale. I am an object of pity. I am looking quite stale. I gave up my trade selling right patent pills to go hunting gold in the dreary black hills. Don't go away, stay at home if you can. Stay away from that city, they call it Cheyenne. For Big Wallopy or Comanche bills, they will lift up your hair on the dreary black hills. The round house in Cheyenne is filled every night with loafers and bummers of most every plight. On their backs is no clothes, in their pockets no bills. Each day they keep starting for the dreary black hills. I got to Cheyenne. No gold could I find. I thought of the lunch route I'd left far behind. Through rain, hail, and snow, frozen plumb to the gills. They call me the orphan of the dreary black hills. Kind friend, to conclude, my advice I'll unfold. Don't go to the Black Hills a-hunting for gold. Railroad speculators, their pockets you'll fill by taking a trip to those dreary Black Hills. Don't go away. Stay at home if you can. Stay away from that city they call it Cheyenne. For old Sitting Bull or Comanche Bills, they will take off your scalp on the dreary Black Hills. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Mormon Song Collected by John Lomax Read for LibriVox.org by Tim Watkins I used to live on cottonwood and on a little farm. I was called upon a mission that gave me much alarm. The reason that they call me, I'm sure I do not know, but to hoe the cane and cotton, straightway I must go. I yoked up Jim and Baldy, all ready for the start, to leave my farm and garden 
it almost broke my heart but at last we got started i cast a look behind for the sand and rocks of dixie were running through my mind now when we got to black ridge my wagon it broke down and i being no carpenter and forty miles from town i cut a clumsy cedar and rigged an awkward slide but the wagon ran so heavy poor betsy couldn't ride while betsy was out walking i told her to take care when all of a sudden she struck a prickly pear then she began to holler as loud as she could bawl if i were back in cottonwood i wouldn't go at all now when we got to sand ridge we couldn't go at all oh jim and o baldy began to puff and loll i cussed and swore a little for i couldn't make the route for the team and i and betsy were all of us played out at length we got to washington i thought we'd stay a while to see if the flowers would make their virgin smile but i was much mistaken for when we went away the red hills of september were just the same in may it is so very dreary there's nothing here to cheer but o oh, pathetic sermons we very often hear they preach them by the dozens and prove them by the book but i'd sooner have a roasting ear and stay at home and cook i am so awful weary i'm sure i'm almost dead tis six long weeks last sunday since i have tasted bread of turnip tops and lucerne greens i've had enough to eat but i'd like to change my diet to buckwheat cakes and meat i had to sell my wagon for sorghum seed and bread o oh, jim and o oh, baldy have long since been dead there's no one left but me and bet to hoe the cotton tree god pity any mormon that attempts to follow me end of poem this recording is in the public domain recording by tim watkins the buffalo hunters collected by john lomax read for LibriVox.org by nemo the buffalo hunters come all you pretty girls to you these lines all right we are going to the range in which we take delight we are going on the range as we poor hunters do and the tender-footed fellows can stay at home with you it's all of the day long as we go tramping round in search of the buffalo that we may shoot him down our guns upon our shoulders our belts of forty rounds we send them up salt river to some happy hunting grounds our game it is the antelope the buffalo wolf and deer who roam the wide prairies without a single fear we rob him of his robe and think it is no harm to buy us food and clothing to keep our bodies warm the buffalo he is the noblest of the band he sometimes rejects in throwing up his hand his shaggy mane thrown forward his head raised to the sky he seems to say we're coming boys so hunter mind your eye our fires are made of mesquite roots our beds are on the ground our house is made of buffalo hides we make them tall and round our furniture is the camp kettle the coffee pot and pan our chuck it is both bread and meat mingled well with sand our neighbors are the cheyennes the rapahoes and sioux their mode of navigation is a buffalo hide canoe and when they come upon you they take you unaware and such a peculiar way they have of raising hunter's hair end a poem this recording is in the public domain the little old sod shanty collected by john lomax and read for LibriVox.org by kurt from tucson arizona i am looking rather seedy now while holding down my claim and my victuals are not always served the best and the mice play shyly round me as i nestle down to rest in my little old sod shanty on my claim the hinges are of leather and the windows have no glass while the board roof lets the howling blizzards in and i hear the hungry coyote as he slinks up through the grass round the little old sod shanty on my claim yet i rather like the novelty of living in this way though my bill of fare is always rather tame 
but I'm happy as a clam on the land of Uncle Sam, in the little old sod shanty on my claim. But when I left my eastern home, a bachelor so gay, to try and win my way to wealth and fame, I little thought I'd come down to burning twisted hay in the little old sod shanty on my claim. My clothes are plastered o'er with dough, I'm looking like a fright, and everything is scattered round the room. But I wouldn't give the freedom that I have out in the West for the table of the eastern man's old home. Still I wish that some kind-hearted girl would pity on me take, and relieve me from the mess that I am in. The angel, how I'd bless her if this her home she'd make, in the little old sod shanty on my claim. And we would make our fortunes on the prairies of the west, just as happy as two lovers we'd remain. We'd forget the trials and troubles we endured at the first, in the little old sod shanty on my claim. And if fate should bless us with now and then an heir, to cheer our hearts with honest pride of fame, Oh, then we'd be contented for the toil that we had spent in the little old sod shanty on our claim. When time enough had lapsed and all those little brats to noble man and womanhood had grown, it wouldn't seem half so lonely as round us we should look, and we'd see the old sod shanty on our claim. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Gall Darned Wheel Collected by John Lomax Read for LibriVox.org by Cindy Tully, Tulsa, Oklahoma The Gall Darned Wheel I can take the wildest bronco in the tough old woolly west I can ride him, I can break him, let him do his level best. I can handle any cattle ever wore a coat of hair, and I've had a lively tussle with a tarnal grizzly bear. I can rope and throw the longhorn of the wildest Texas brand, and in Indian disagreements I can play a leading hand. But at last I got my master, and he surely made me squeal. When the boys got me a straddle of that gall darned wheel. It was at the Eagle Ranch on the Brazos when I first found that darn contrivance that upset me in the dust. A tenderfoot had brought it, he was wheeling all the way from the sunrise end of freedom out to San Francisco Bay. He tied up at the ranch for to get outside a meal never thinking we would monkey with his gall-darned wheel. Arizona Jim begun it when he said to Jack McGill, There was fellows forced to limit bragging on their riding skill, and he'd venture the admission the same fellow that he meant was a very handy cutter far as riding broncos went. But he would find that he was bucking against a different kind of deal, if he threw his leather leggings gainst a gall-darned wheel. Such a slam against my talent made me hotter than a mink, and I swore that I would ride him for amusement or for chink. And it was nothing but a plaything for the kids and such about, and they'd have their ideas shattered if they'd lead the critter out. They held it while I mounted and gave the word to go, the shove they gave to start me weren't unreasonably slow. But I never spilled a cuss word and I never spilled a squeal. I was building reputation on that gall-darned wheel. Holy Moses and the prophets how we split the Texas air and the wind it made whip crackers of my same old canthy hair. And I sort of comprehended as down the hill we went there was bound to be a smash-up that I couldn't well prevent. Oh, how them punchers bawled, Stay with her, Uncle Bill. Stick your spurs in her, you sucker. Turn her muzzle up the hill. 
but I never made an answer. I just let the cusses squeal. I was finding reputation on that gall-darned wheel. The grade was mighty sloping from the ranch down to the creek, and I went a gala flutin' like a crazy lightning streak. Went whizzing and a-darting first this way and then that, the darn contrivance sort of wobbling like the flying of a bat. I pulled upon the handles, but I couldn't check it up. And I yanked and sawed and hollowed, but the darn thing wouldn't stop. Then a sort of a meachin in my brain began to steal, that the devil held a mortgage on that gall-darned wheel. I've a sort of dim and hazy remembrance of the stop, with the world a-goin' round and the stars all tangled up. Then there came an intermission that lasted till I found I was lyin' at the ranch with the boys all gathered round, and a doctor was a-sewin' on the skin where it was ripped, and old Arizona whispered, Well, old boy, I guess you're whipped. And I told him I was busted from sombrero down to heel, and he grinned and said, You ought to see that gall-darned wheel. End of poem this recording is in the public domain. Recording by Cindy Tully, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Bonnie Black Bess, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Betty B. Bonnie Black Bess, when fortune's blind goddess had fled my abode, and friends proved unfaithful, I took to the road to plunder the wealthy and relieve my distress i bought you to aid me my bonnie black bess no vile whip nor spur did your sides ever gall for none did you need you would bound at my call and for each act of kindness you would me caress thou art never unfaithful my bonnie black bess when dark sable midnight her mantle had thrown o'er the bright face of nature how oft we have gone to the famed hounslow heath though an unwelcome guest to the minions of fortune my bonny black bess how silent you stood when the carriage i stopped the gold and the jewels its inmates would drop no poor man i plundered nor e'er did oppress the widows or orphans my bonny black bess when argus eyed justice did me hot pursue from yorktown to london like lightning we flew no toll bars could stop you the waters did breast and in twelve hours we made it my bonnie black bess but hate darkens o'er me despair is my lot and the law does pursue me for the many i've shot to save me poor brute thou hast done thy best thou art worn out and weary my bonnie black bess hark they never shall have a beast like thee so noble and gentle and brave thou must die my dumb friend though it does me distress there there i have shot thee my bonnie black bess in after years when i am dead and gone this story will be handed from father to son my fate some will pity and some will confess twas through kindness i killed thee my bonnie black bess no one can e'er say that ingratitude dwelt in the bosom of turpin twas a vice never felt i will die like a man and soon be at rest now farewell for ever my bonnie black bess end of poem this recording is in the public domain the last longhorn collected by john lomax read for librivox dot org by peter yearsley an ancient long-horned bovine lay dying by the river there was lack of vegetation and the cold winds made him shiver a cowboy sat beside him with sadness in his face to see his final passing this last of a noble race the ancient eunuch struggled and raised his shaking head saying i care not to linger when all my friends are dead these jerseys and these holsteins 
they are no friends of mine they belong to the nobility who live across the brine tell the durhams and the herefords when they come a grazing round and see me lying stark and stiff upon the frozen ground i don't want them to bellow when they see that i am dead for i was born in texas near the river that is red tell the coyotes when they come at night a hunting for their prey they might as well go further for they'll find it will not pay if they attempt to eat me they very soon will see that my bones and hide are petrified they'll find no beef on me i remember back in the seventies full many summers past there was grass and water plenty but it was too good to last i little dreamed what would happen some twenty summers hence when the nester came with his wife his kids his dogs and his barbed wire fence his voice sank to a murmur his breath was short and thick the cowboy tried to skin him when he saw he couldn't kick he rubbed his knife upon his boot until he made it shine but he never skinned old longhorn cause he couldn't cut his rine and the cowboy riz up sadly and mounted his cayuse saying the time has come when longhorns and their cowboys are no use and while gazing sadly backward upon the dead bovine his bronc stepped in a dog hole and fell and broke his spine the cowboys and the longhorns who partnered in eighty four have gone to their last round-up over on the other shore they answered well their purpose but their glory must fade and go because men say there's better things in the modern cattle show End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Prisoner for Life Collected by John Lomax and read for LibriVox.org by Kurt from Tucson, Arizona Fare you well, green fields, soft meadows, adieu, Rocks and mountains, I depart from you never more shall my eyes by your beauties be blessed never more shall you soothe my sad bosom to rest farewell little birdies that fly in the sky you fly all day long and sing your troubles by i am doomed to this cell i heave a deep sigh my heart sinks within me in anguish i die Fare you well, little fishes, that glides through the sea. Your life's all sunshine, all light, and all glee. Never more shall I watch your skill in the wave. I'll depart from all friends this side of the grave. What would I give such freedom to share, to roam at my ease and breathe the fresh air? I would roam through the cities, through village and dell, but I never would return to my cold prison cell. What's life without liberty, I oft times have said, of a poor troubled mind that's always in dread. No sun, moon, and stars can on me now shine, no change in my danger from daylight till dawn. Fare you well, kind friends, I am willing to own such a wild outcast never was known i'm the downfall of my family my children my wife god pity and pardon the poor prisoner for life end of poem this recording is in the public domain the wars of germany collected by john lomax read for LibriVox.org by nemo the wars of germany there was a wealthy merchant in london he did dwell he had an only daughter the truth to you i'll tell sing i am left alone sing i am left alone she was courted by a lord of very high degree she was courted by a sailor jack just from the wars of germany sing i am left alone sing i am left alone her parents came to know this that such a thing could be a sailor jack a sailor lad just from the wars of germany sing i am left alone sing i am left alone 
so polly she's at home with money at command she taken a notion to view some foreign land sing i am left alone sing i am left alone she went to the tailor's shop and dressed herself in man's array and was off to an officer to carry her straight away sing i am left alone sing i am left alone good morning says the officer and morning says she here's fifty guineas if you'll carry me to the wars of germany sing i am left alone sing i am left alone your waist is too slender your fingers are too small i am afraid from your countenance you can't face a cannon-ball sing i am left alone sing i am left alone my waist is not too slender my fingers are not too small and never would i quiver to face a cannon-ball sing i am left alone sing i am left alone we don't often list an officer unless the name we know she answered him in a low sweet voice you may call me jack Monroe. sing i am left alone sing i am left alone we gathered up our men and quickly we did sail we landed in france with a sweet and pleasant gale sing i am left alone sing i am left alone we were walking on the land up and down the line among the dead and wounded her own true love she did find sing i am left alone sing i am left alone she picked him up in all her arms to towson town she went she soon found a doctor to dress and heal his wounds sing i am left alone sing i am left alone so jacky he is married and his bride by his side in spite of her old parents in all the world beside sing no longer left alone sing no longer left alone and a poem this recording is in the public domain Freighting from Wilcox to Globe, collected by John Lomax and read for LibriVox.org by Kurt from Tucson, Arizona. Come all you jolly freighters that has freighted on the road, that has hauled a load of freight from Wilcox to Globe. We freighted on this road for sixteen years or more, a hauling freight for Livermore. No wonder that I'm poor. And it's home, dearest home and it's home you ought to be over on the gila in the white man's country where the poplar and the ash and the mesquite will ever be growing green down on the gila there's a home for you and me twas in the spring of seventy three i started with my team led by false illusion and those foolish golden dreams the first night out from wilcox my best wheel horse was stole and it makes me curse a little to come out in the hole this then only left me three kit molly and old mike mike being the best one of the three i put him out on spike i then took the mountain road so the people would not smile and it took fourteen days to travel thirteen mile but i got there all the same with my little three up spike it taken all my money then to buy a mate for mike you all know how it is when once you get behind you never get even again till you damn steal them blind i was an honest man when i first took to the road i would not swear an oath nor would i tap a load but now you ought to see my mules when i begin to cuss they flop their ears and wiggle their tails and pull the load or bust now i can tap a whiskey barrel with nothing but a stick no one can detect me i've got it down so slick just fill it up with water sure there's no harm in that now my clothes are not the finest nor are they genteel but they will have to do me till i can make another steal my boots are number elevens for i swiped them from a chow and my coat costs dos realis from a little apache squaw 
now i have freighted in the sand i have freighted in the rain i have bogged my wagons down and dug them out again i have worked both late and early till i was almost dead and i have spent some nights sleeping in an arizona bed now barbed wire and bacon is all that they will pay but you have to show your copper checks to get your grain and hay if you ask them for five dollars old myers will scratch his pate and the clerks in their white stiff collars say get down and pull your freight but i want to die and go to hell get there before livermore and myers and get a job of hauling coke to keep up the devil's fires if i get the job of singeing them i'll see they don't get free i'll treat them like a yaller dog as they have treated me and it's home dearest home and it's home you ought to be over on the gila in the white man's country where the poplar and the ash and mesquite will ever be growing green down on the gila there's a home for you and me end of poem this recording is in the public domain the arizona boys and girls collected by john lomax read for librivox dot org by betty b the arizona boys and girls come all of you people i pray you draw near a comical ditty you all shall hear the boys in this country they try to advance by courting the ladies and learning to dance and they're down down and they're down the boys in this country they try to be plain those words that you hear you may hear them again with twice as much added on if you can there's many a boy stuck up for a man and they're down down and they're down they will go to their parties their whiskey they'll take and out in the dark their bottles they'll break you'll hear one say there's a bottle around here so come around boys and we'll all take a share and they're down down and they're down there is some wears shoes and some wears boots but there are very few that rides who don't shoot more than this i'll tell you what they'll do they'll get them a watch and a ranger hat too and they're down down and they're down they'll go in the hall with spurs on their heel they'll get em a partner to dance the next reel saying how do i look in my new brown suit with my pants stuffed down in the top of my boot and they're down down and they're down now i think it's quite time to leave off these lads for here are some girls that's fully as bad they'll trim up their dresses and curl up their hair and like an old owl before the glass they'll stare and they're down down and they're down the girls in the country they grin like a cat and with giggling and laughing they don't know what they're at they think they're pretty and i'll tell you they're wise but they couldn't get married to save their two eyes and they're down down and they're down you can tell a good girl wherever she's found no trimming no lace no nonsense around with a long-eared bonnet tied under her chin and they're down down and they're down they'll go to church with their snuff-box in hand they'll give it a tap to make it look grand perhaps there's another one or two and they'll pass it around and it's madam won't you and they're down down and they're down now i think it's quite time for this ditty to end if there's any one here that it will offend if there's any one here that thinks it's a miss just come around now and give the singer a kiss and they're down down and they're down end of poem this recording is in the public domain the dying ranger collected by john lomax read for a librivox dot org the sun was sinking in the west and fell with lingering gray through the branches of a forest where a wounded ranger lay beneath the shade of a palmetto in the sunset silvery sky far away from his home in texas they laid him down to die a group had gathered round him his comrades in the fight a tear rolled down each manly cheek as he bid a last good night one tried and true companion was kneeling by his side to stop his life blood flowing but alas in vain he tried when to stop the life blood flowing he found twas all in vain the tears rolled down each man's cheek like light showers of rain 
up spoke the noble ranger boys weep no more for me i'm across in the deep waters to a country that is free draw closer to me comrades and listen to what i say i'm going to tell a story while my spirit hastens away way back in northwest texas that good old lone star state there is one that for my coming with a weary heart will wait a fair young girl my sister my only joy my pride she was my friend from boyhood i had no one left beside i have loved her as a brother and with a father's care i have strove from grief and sorrow her gentle heart to spare my mother she lies sleeping beneath the churchyard sod and many a day has passed away since her spirit fled to god my father he lies sleeping beneath the deep blue sea i have no other kindred there are none but nell and me but our country was invaded and they called for volunteers she threw her arms around me then burst into tears saying go oh, my darling brother drive those traitors from our shore my heart may need your presence but our country needs you more it is true i love my country for her i gave my all if it hadn't been for my sister i would be content to fall i'm dying comrades dying she will never see me more but in vain she'll wait my coming by our little cabin door comrades gather closer and listen to my dying prayer who will be to her as a brother and shield her with a brother's care up spake the noble rangers they answered one and all we will be to her as brothers till the last one does fall one glad smile of pleasure over the ranger's face was spread one dark convulsive shadow and the ranger boy was dead far from his darling sister we laid him down to rest with his saddle for a pillow and his gun across his breast End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Fair Fanny Moore, collected by John Lomax, recorded for LibriVox.org by Peter Yearsley. Yonder stands a cottage, all deserted and alone. Its paths are neglected, with grass overgrown. Go in, and you will see some dark stains on the floor. Alas, it is the blood of fair Fanny Moore. To Fanny, so blooming, two lovers they came. One offered young Fanny his wealth and his name, but neither his money nor pride could secure a place in the heart of fair Fanny Moore. The first was young Randall, so bold and so proud, who to the fair Fanny his haughty head bowed, but his wealth and his house both failed to allure the heart from the bosom of fair Fanny Moore. The next was young Henry, of lowest degree. He won her fond love, and enraptured was he. And then, at the altar, he quick did secure the hand with the heart of the fair Fanny Moore. As she was alone in her cottage one day, when business had called her fond husband away, young Randall, the haughty, came in at the door, and clasped in his arms the fair Fanny Moore. Oh, Fanny, oh, Fanny, reflect on your fate, and accept of my offer, before it's too late. For one thing to-night I am bound to secure, tis the love or the life of the fair Fanny Moore. Spare me, oh, spare me, the young Fanny cries, while the tears swiftly flow from her beautiful eyes. Oh, no, cries young Randall, go home to your rest, and he buried his knife in her snowy white breast. So Fanny, so blooming, in her bright beauty, died. Young Randall, the haughty, was taken and tried. At length he was hung on a tree at the door for shedding the blood of the fair Fanny Moore. Young Henry, the shepherd, distracted and wild, did wander away from his own native isle, till, at length, claimed by death, he was brought to this shore, 
and laid by the side of the fair Fanny Moore. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Helen, Texas, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Nima. The devil were told, and hell was chained, and a thousand years he there remained. He never complained, nor did he groan, but determined to start a hell of his own, where he could torment the souls of men without being chained in a prison pen. So he asked the Lord if he had on hand anything left when he made the land. The Lord said, Yes, I had plenty on hand, but I left it down on the Rio Grande. The fact is, old boy, the stuff is so poor, I don't think you could use it in hell any more. But the devil went down to look at the truck, and said if it came as a gift he was stuck, for after examining it carefully and well, he concluded the place was too dry for hell. So in order to get it off his hands, the Lord promised the devil to water the lands, for he had some water, or rather some dregs, a regular cathartic that smelled like bad eggs. Hence the deal was closed and the deed was given, and the Lord went back to his home in heaven. And the devil then said, I have all that is needed to make a good hell, and hence he succeeded. He began to put thorns in all the trees, and mixed up the sand with millions of fleas, and scattered tarantulas along all the roads, put thorns on the cactus and horns on the toads. He lengthened the horns of the Texas steers, and put an addition on the rabbit's ears, he put a little devil on the bronco steed, and poisoned the feet of the centipede. The rattlesnake bites you, the scorpion stings, the mosquito delights you with buzzing wings, the sand birds prevail, and so do the ants, and those who sit down need half soles on their pants. The devil then said that throughout the land he'd managed to keep up the devil's own brand, and all would be mavericks unless they bore the marks of scratches and bites and thorns by the score. The heat in the summer is a hundred and ten, too hot for the devil and too hot for men. The wild boar roams through the black chaparral. It's a hell of a place he has for hell. The red pepper grows on the banks of the brook. The Mexicans use it in all that they cook. Just dine with a greaser, and then you will shout, I've hell on the inside, as well as the out. And a poem. This recording is in the public domain. By Markentura's Flowery Marge, collected by John Lomax and read for LibriVox.org by Kurt from Tucson, Arizona. By Markentura's Flowery Marge, the Red Chief's wigwam stood before the white man's rifle rang, loud echoing through the wood. The tommyhawk and scalping knife together lay at rest and peace was in the forest shade and in the red man's breast oh the spotted fawn oh the spotted fawn the life and light of the forest shade the red chief's child is gone by markentura's flowery marge the spotted fawn had birth and grew as fair an indian maid as ever graced the earth she was the red chief's only child and sought by many a brave but to the gallant young white cloud her plighted troth she gave. By Markentura's flowery marge the bridal song arose, nor dreamed they in that festive night of near approaching woes. But through the forest stealthily the white man came in wrath, and fiery darts before them spread, and death was in their path. By Markentura's flowery marge next morn no strife was seen, but a wail went up for the young fawn's blood, and white clouds dyed the green. A burial in their own rude way the Indians gave them there, and a low sweet requiem the brook sang and the air. Oh, the spotted fawn, oh, the spotted fawn, the life and light of the forest shade, the red chief's child is gone. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The State of Arkansas 
collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. The State of Arkansas. My name is Stamford Barnes. I come from Nobleville Town. I've traveled this wide world over. I've traveled this wide world round. I've met with ups and downs in life, but better days I've saw. But I never knew what misery were till I came to Arkansas. I landed in St. Louis with ten dollars and no more. I read the daily papers till both my eyes were sore. I read them evening papers until at last I saw ten thousand men were wanted in the state of Arkansas. I wiped my eyes with great surprise when I read this grateful news, and straightway off I started to see the agent Billy Hughes. He says, pay me five dollars and a ticket to you all draw it'll land you safe upon the railroad in the state of arkansas i started off one morning a quarter after five i started from st louis half dead and half alive i bought me a quart of whiskey my misery to thaw i got as drunk as a biled owl when i left for old arkansas i landed in fort smith one sultry sunday afternoon it was in the month of may the early month of june up stepped a walking skeleton with a long and lantern jaw invited me to his hotel the best in arkansas i followed my conductor into his dwelling place poverty were depictured in his melancholy face his bread it was corn dodger his beef i could not chaw this was the kind of hash they fed me in the state of arkansas i started off next morning to catch the morning train he says to me you'd better work for i have some land to drain i'll pay you fifty cents a day your board washing and all you'll find yourself a different man when you leave old arkansas i worked six weeks for the son of a gun jesse herring was his name he was six foot seven in his stocking feet and taller than any crane his hair hung down in strings over his long and lantern jaw he was a photograph of all the gents who lived in arkansas he fed me on corn dodgers as hard as any rock until my teeth began to loosen and my knees began to knock i got so thin on sassafras tea i could hide behind a straw and indeed i was a different man when i left old arkansas farewell to swamp angels cane brakes and chills farewell to sage and sassafras and corn dodger pills if ever i see this land again i'll give to you my paw it will be through a telescope from here to arkansas end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Texas Cowboy, collected by John Lomax and read for LibriVox.org by Kurt from Tucson, Arizona. Oh, I am a Texas cowboy, far away from home. If I ever get back to Texas, I never more will roam. Montana is too cold for me, and the winters are too long. Before the roundups do begin, our money is all gone take this old henskin bedding too thin to keep me warm i nearly freeze to death my boys whenever there's a storm and take this old tarpaulin too thin to shield my frame i got it down in nebraska a deal in a monte game now to win these fancy leggings i'll have enough to do they cost me twenty dollars the day that they were new I have an outfit on the muscle shell, but that I'll never see, unless I get sent to represent the circle or DT. I've worked down in Nebraska, where the grass grows ten feet high, and the cattle are such rustlers that they seldom ever die. I've worked up in the sand hills and down upon the plat, where the cowboys are good fellows, and the cattle always fat. 
I've traveled lots of country, Nebraska's hills of sand, down through the Indian nation and up the Rio Grande. But the badlands of Montana are the worst I ever seen. The cowboys are all tender feet and the dogies are too lean. If you want to see some badlands, go over on the dry. You will bog down in the coolies where the mountains reach the sky. A tenderfoot to lead you who never knows the way. You are playing in the best of luck if you eat more than once a day. Your grub is bread and bacon and coffee black as ink. The water is so full of alkali it is hardly fit to drink. They will wake you in the morning before the break of day and send you on a circle a hundred miles away. Along the Yellowstone, tis cold the year round. You will surely get consumption by sleeping on the ground. Work in Montana is six months in the year. When all your bills are settled, there is nothing left for beer. Work down in Texas is all the year round. You will never get consumption by sleeping on the ground. Come all you Texas cowboys and warning take from me. And do not go to Montana to spend your money free. But stay at home in Texas where work lasts the year round. And you will never catch consumption by sleeping on the ground. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Dreary, Dreary Life, collected by John Lomax and read for LibriVox.org by Kurt from Tucson, Arizona. A cowboy's life is a dreary, dreary life. Some say it's free from care, rounding up the cattle from morning till night in the middle of the prairie so bare. Half past four, the noisy cook will roar, whoopa, whoopa, hey! Slowly you will rise with the sleepy feeling eyes, the sweet dreamy night passed away. The greener lad, he thinks it's play, he'll soon peter out on a cold rainy day. With his big bell spurs and his Spanish hoss, he'll swear to you he was once a boss. The cowboy's life is a dreary, dreary life. He's driven through the heat and cold, while the rich man's a-sleeping on his velvet couch, dreaming of his silver and gold. Springtime sets in, double trouble will begin. The weather is so fierce and cold, clothes are wet and frozen to our necks, the cattle we can scarcely hold. The cowboy's life is a dreary one. He works all day to the setting of the sun, and then his day's work is not done, for there's his night herd to go on. The wolves and owls with their terrifying howls will disturb us in our midnight dream as we lie on our slickers on a cold rainy night way over on the Pecos stream. You are speaking of your farms, you are speaking of your charms, you are speaking of your silver and gold, but a cowboy's life is a dreary, dreary life. He's driven through the heat and the cold. Some folks say that we are free from care, free from all other harm. But we round up the cattle from morning till night, way over on the prairie so dry. I used to run about, now I stay at home, take care of my wife and child. Never more to roam, always stay at home, take care of my wife and child. Half past four, the noisy cook will roar. Hurrah, boys, she's breaking day. Slowly we will rise and wipe our sleepy eyes. The sweet dreamy night passed away. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Jim Farrow Collected by John Lomax and read for LibriVox.org by Kurt from Tucson, Arizona. It's Jim Farrow and John Farrow and little Simon, too, Have plenty of cattle where I have but few, Marking and branding both night and day. It's keep still, boys, my boys, and you'll all get your pay. 
it's up to the courthouse the first thing they know before the grand jury they'll have to go they'll ask you about earmarks they'll ask you about brand but tell them you were absent when the work was on hand jim farrell brands j f on the side the next comes johnny who takes the whole hide little simon too has h on the loin i'll stand for pharaoh but it's not good for sime you ask for the mark i don't think it's fair you'll find the cow's head but the ear isn't there it's a crop and a split and a sort of a twine i'll stand for f but it's not good for sime get up my boys jim farrow will say and out to horse hunting before it is day so we get up and are out on the way but it's damn few horses we find before day now saddle your horses and out on the peaks to see if the heifers are out on the creeks we'll round em to-day and we'll round em to-morrow and this ends my song concerning the farrows end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Young Charlotte, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Betty B. Young Charlotte, young Charlotte lived by a mountain side in a wild and lonely spot. There was no village for miles around except her father's cot, and yet on many a wintry night young boys would gather there her father kept a social board and she was very fair one new year's eve as the sun went down she cast a wistful eye out from the window-pane as a merry sleigh went by at a village fifteen miles away was to be a ball that night although the air was piercing cold her heart was merry and light at last her laughing eye lit up as a well-known voice she heard and dashing in front of the door her lover's sleigh appeared o oh, daughter dear her mother said this blanket round you fold tis such a dreadful night abroad and you will catch your death of cold oh no oh no young charlotte cried as she laughed like a gypsy queen to ride in blankets muffled up i never would be seen my silken coat is quite enough you know it is lined throughout and there is my silken scarf to wrap my head and neck about her bonnet and her gloves were on she jumped into the sleigh and swiftly slid down the mountain side and over the hills away all muffled up so silent five miles at last were past when charlie with few but shivering words the silence broke at last such a dreadful night i never saw my reins i can scarcely hold young charlotte then feebly said i am exceedingly cold he cracked his whip and urged his speed much faster than before while at least five other miles in silence had passed o'er spoke charles how fast the freezing ice is gathering on my brow young charlotte then feebly said i am growing warmer now so on they sped through the frosty air and the glittering cold starlight until at last the village lights and the ballroom came in sight they reached the door and charles sprang out and reached his hands to her why sit you there like a monument that has no power to stir he called her once he called her twice she answered not a word and then he called her once again but still she never stirred he took her hand in his twas cold and hard as any stone he tore the mantle from her face while cold stars on it shone then quickly to the lighted hall her lifeless form he bore young charlotte's eyes were closed for ever her voice was heard no more and there he sat down by her side while bitter tears did flow and cried my own my charming bride you never more shall know he twined his arms around her neck and kissed her marble brow and his thoughts flew back to where she said i'm growing warmer now he took her back into the sleigh and quickly hurried home when he arrived at her father's door oh how her friends did mourn they mourned the loss of a daughter dear while charles wept over the gloom till at last he died with the bitter grief now they both lie in one tomb end of poem this recording is in the public domain
The Skew Ball Black Collected by John Lomax and read for LibriVox.org by Kurt from Tucson, Arizona. It was down to Red River I came, prepared to play a damn tough game. Woe a skew till I saddle you, oh. I crossed the river to the ranch where I intended to work, with a big six-shooter and a darned good dirk. Woe a skew till I saddle you, oh. They rope me out a skew-ball black, with a double set fast on his back. Whoa, skew till I saddle you, whoa. And when I was mounted on his back, the boys all yelled, just give him slack. Whoa, skew till I saddle you, whoa. They rolled and tumbled and yelled, by God, for he threw me a whirling all over the sod. Whoa, skew till I saddle you, whoa. I went to the boss and I told him I'd resign. The fool tumbled over and thought he was dying. Whoa, skew till I saddle you, whoa. And it's to Arkansas I'll go back, to hell with Texas and the skew ball black. Whoa, skew till I saddle you, whoa. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Rambling Cowboy, collected by John Lomax, read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. The Rambling Cowboy. There was a rich old rancher who lived in the country by. He had a lovely daughter, on whom I cast my eye. She was pretty, tall, and handsome both neat and very fair there's no other girl in the country with her i could compare i asked her if she would be willing for me to cross the plains she said she would be truthful until i returned again she said she would be faithful until death did prove unkind so we kissed shook hands and parted and i left my girl behind i left the state of texas for arizona i was bound I landed in Tombstone City. I viewed the place all round. Money and work were plentiful, and the cowboys they were kind. But the only thought of my heart was the girl I left behind. One day as I was riding across the public square, the mail coach came in and I met the driver there. He handed me a letter which gave me to understand that the girl I left in Texas had married another man. I turned myself all round, and about not knowing what to do, but I read on down some further, and it proved the words were true. Hard work I have laid over, it's gambling I have designed, I'll ramble this wide world over for the girl I left behind. Come all ye reckless and rambling boys who have listened to this song. If it hasn't done you any good, it hasn't done you any wrong. But when you court a pretty girl, just marry her while you can, for if you go across the plains, she'll marry another man. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain.